So, I'm here to update the flanker and DPS loadouts that I have talked about in these two videos right now. There has been a patch in between this video and the previous ones, so some things are a little bit different, but mostly everything is pretty much the same. If you want me to go over the item shop and all of the new options that we have and what's optimal and what's not, I can do that, especially with the new item called Horde. This there, There's been like a pretty big misconception that oh, a Horde one is best and like don't level it up or whatever these people can't do math they haven't proven anything they're just spewing out nonsense from who knows where so leon got a pretty big buff uh her autos went from dealing 400 damage to 450 and they have better range scaling and they have a better maximum range too most of your games you're going to be playing precision nowadays some matchups depending on the maps you're going to play probably eminence uh it surely doesn't change a lot it depends on what you're more comfortable with like I happen to find myself on Splitstone and Timbermill uh, playing Eminence a bit more uh, if I'm playing against uh, ranged characters or if nobody can actually get to me. Otherwise, I'm gonna play Precision if I'm uh, against flankers that I have to deal with or just a, a tank that is pretty fast and can get to me pretty easily. We talked about the loadouts. Uh, this doesn't change. You could make an argument that oh, for ranked you can have a little variant with like a bit less ammo, more dash distance or more HP or whatever the fuck you want. But this is basically the optimal serious loadout and then if you want to tweak it because you prefer this or that, you do you, man. To be fair, Omen frankly quite sucks right now. He kind of sucks balls. Umbra Lens is not a thing anymore. Binary Void sucks and Everyone Dies sucks. Both of them are pretty bad. It doesn't matter which one you pick. I think Binary Void is maybe a tad better than Everyone Dies just because you can have two charges of these and like have a bit more ammo through your loadout. But like... Yeah, right now, loadouts look pretty much like this, if I remember correctly. Yes, this is the loadout. Yeah, you still need the damage buff and you can go like full shotgun mode or like you can shoot a few bullets. But if you play without this card, it's gonna feel horrible because he has zero damage. And if you play with this card, it still doesn't feel as good because he doesn't have a lot of ammo and now you have to stay, uh, you have to hold M1 to be able to shoot at a range which is uh, kind of disgusting. Vatu got changed in his talents. Enveloping Shadows has now a 3 second internal cooldown, which is enough to make it much, much, much worse than what it was before. It's not terrible. It's not as good as playing Omnipresence right now. A lot of people are playing Unearing. That's just a certified uh, skill issue because who the fuck uh, plays this if you can land your right clicks? Right. The additional charge is really good. Also, Omnipresence gives you a better, uh, a bigger cone. Like, you don't have to aim as precisely on the enemy characters to be able to TP to them, which is nice if you have to, like, some quick flicks or some crazy movement stuff. And the additional charge is nice. Loadout wise, it's pretty much the same. Like, he, th these four loadouts are the same. Maybe I don't play this one as much because I like the range a bit more nowadays. Uh, because of the changes but to be fair you can play whichever you want they're all like these three are the same basically with one or two point differences and this one is just if you're playing against like uh, triple support two tanks uh, stack on point and win or something aura still plays unyielding pressure but we switched from this approach which works sometimes situationally to this approach which used to be the niche approach and now is more common and stronger than before because of the item shops Aurora usually will buy Horde 2 at the start of a round which allows her after the first round to get Kronos very fast if you win uh, the first point cap you get Horde 3 and then you get all of your items which is Kronos 2 and then basically uh, you know Haven what it, whatever it's called now and then Veteran the whole idea here instead of being like this big tanky uh, flanker that dishes out a lot of damage you're gonna be more mobile you can go for flanks from time to time and kill people but most of the time you're gonna use your vine to be able to go up in the air and dish out damage from angles that you couldn't get to before and the reason you're allowed to use your vine like that is because if you hit your q you basically have your vine again so you're not punished for using it that way because it's not like, oh, I use it, I have a, like a 10 second cooldown and then I'm gonna get dived, right, or something. This also allows you to do some crazy plays. Like I've had some crazy good games with Vora recently. I've also had bad games because I'm still trying to figure out the whole thing, but I've had crazy good games because you can do so much stuff now if you're like on the right map where you can vine uh, pretty comfortably. 
you can do some crazy shit and go all around the map and take the duels that you want and basically control the pace of the game. Now 7 unfortunately got changes but there was a hotfix just now and I'm not quite sure how it works. Okay, I have to correct myself. These balance changes will not be reflected within game descriptions. These will be corrected in a future update. So the descriptions are going to be corrected in a future update, but the hotfix is already the hotfix is already, is already live. Like everything that I talked about is up to date and it's now. It's not in the future. They nerfed the mag dump. So what people have been doing is playing mag dump with what is it? Uh with deft hands and They've been just, you know, running at people, uh, dumping their mags on them and like dealing 2k damage in a split second, which is kind of crazy. The only thing that is bad about this playstyle is it's very predictable so you can play around it and that's why 7 wasn't that good even though he deals a lot of damage. And you would play overcharged, right? Now, I don't think the character is playable at all. If you want to play him, I think it's back to... I think it's back to this. Just pew 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 uh, your way uh, with... Uh, this talent or like this talent whatever you like i don't think anything is really good right now so if you really want to play him i think you can play tribunal upgrades with this and play the with the burst mode or if you want to still try out the mag dump variant you can just play this with you can still play like that you can reduce a little bit the recoil you can increase the recoil reduction or you can reduce it depending on how well you're controlling it uh give it a try if you still want to play him like that even though i don't think that's is good. Lex has been destroyed on heroism. Uh, it says gain immunity to con crowd control and reduce your damage taken by 90%. Uh, there is a hotfix on Steam. I don't know if it's deployed right now or it's going to be in the very near future, but it's going to be brought down from 90% to 40%. So basically un unusable, right? And also they're nerfing warrants out they're nerfing it a little bit. Instead of scaling 10 per 10, it's going to be scaling 8% per 8%. Still a good card, just not as effective. And this one is not going to be percents based anymore. It's going to be flat. And I think it's going to be 0 0.1 seconds. And every time you increase the level, it's going to increase by 0 0.1, if I'm not mistaken. So TLDR, if you still want to play that, sure. I mean, I, I cannot change your mind. But if I were to play Lex as a mouse and keyboard player, I would play Death Hastens and I would play with the typical Death Hastens loadout that I've shown you because I don't think this is as good anymore and and this has decent damage output but the 15% is not decent enough to actually make a big impact and it's only on one target so Death Hastens allows you to have some range and play uh, a little bit differently and be more flexible. Maeve unfortunately was nerfed. Uh, we went from spamming Cat Burglar to basically not playing her or playing her just for the sake of street justice. The loadouts are the same. I'm still gonna show them to you right now. These two loadouts are street justice, depending on morale boost or not, depending on what you're playing against and what they're buying. And these three were... actually the custom one doesn't matter. But these two were basically the Cat Burglar loadout, so you can play Cat Burglar if you want, but it feels like ass and it's pretty bad if you're a good mave like if you're a really good mave and you play cat burglar you're gonna be fine but it's not gonna feel as nice you have it's gonna mess with some breakpoints that you're used to like you know two shotting people for example but street justice is still fine in some situations right but usually like i said if you have to play street justice mave that means you either fucked up your bands and you banned what you should have picked or you just have a shitty champion pool and you can't play any other characters that would have been good. It would have been good instead of Maeve, Street Justice. 